Hey, it's your boy Derek coming to you live from inside my vehicle. And uh, just giving you guys a quick a quick thing today. November 1, obviously Halloween's over, so move on to Christmas and Thanksgiving, obviously. And uh, number two, you know, I just talk about a lot about, like, um, you know, people's attitudes. So obviously, you know, Halloween's a fun time of year. Everyone gets spooky and you get your house cleaned up. And then this time of year generally tends to be a little bit better because people tend to be more happy because Christmas is coming. You see other people out there doing stuff. And... You know, I just left Shaw's. I was getting something real quick, and I saw this guy just fucking, after he put shit in his car, he just let go of his carriage, and it just started fucking going downhill. And I'm like, what a fucking asshole. Like, why do people do that? Like, why do people just let go of the carriage? Like, look, I get it. It's a pain in the ass to put it back in the carriage corral. Uh, you know, I understand women with children, or even men with children, if you got someone and the kids in the car and the carriage crawls fight, well, you're not going to leave the kids in the car by themselves. It's Number one, it's illegal. Number two, you shouldn't do it. So they kind of take it and either wedge it somewhere or on the grass or one of those things. But this guy, by himself, just a straight dude, just let the fucking carriage go. And I'm like, what? Like, their mindset is just, they don't give a shit about anybody but them. And I mean, that's everywhere, right? So we see that everywhere. It, it, it's, at, it's at the office place. There's people who only care about themselves. There's people, you know, at your gym who don't restack the weights. There's people, you know, in your family members that probably just give a shit about them and no one else. And in their mind, it's all about them. And that's a fucked up way to live, right? You can be successful doing that. Don't get me wrong. You can make money. You can do a lot of different things uh, and be successful at doing that job. But the reality is the, uh, it's, it's a, it's a hell way to live. Like you just care about yourself. And I don't know if there's a cosmic energy out there that they call karma is actually true. I, I like to believe that is, um, and I think stuff like that comes back to you. these people, you know, I've lived with them. I, I've seen them. I've seen people like that. I've worked with them. I see them. Um, I see them at different places and you can just always tell that attitude, like they just don't give a shit, right? And you even see little kids starting that attitude. Maybe they're, they're taught that from their family. Maybe it's an eight, maybe it's something they just develop. I don't know. But it reminded me of that story about, you know, from the other side and talking about two people that were comparing notes. So there was a guy from heaven and a guy from hell and they compared notes about how it was to live there. And the guy from heaven asked the guy from hell, like, hey, how is it? Like, what is it like down there as they're going through it? And the guy from hell goes, oh, it's it's horrible. You know, we, we work all day and we stoke the furnaces. We get the fires going. And at the end of the day, we're starving. We're starving. The devil lines us all up into this hall. Into this hall and he has his great big tables high up with the, all the food you can want. Chinese food, chicken, uh, uh, you know, Mexican, just turkey, ham, anything you want, it's there. And he lines us all up at the table. And we all, he says, everyone can eat. We only have one rule down here in hell. You have to have manners. You have to use your forks. And these forks have three foot long handles. There's no way you can pick the food up and serve yourself. It's, it, I tell you, it's torture. It's torture living down here with this. And the guy from heaven says, oh. We have the same tables up in heaven, and we have the same food up in heaven, and we have the same rules you do. We have to use utensils, and we have the same forks. When we sit down, we decide we're going to feed each other. Do you see what I'm talking about there? They're going to feed each other. The guy from hell doesn't even have the mindset to think about that. They don't think that way. The guy today at the carriage doesn't even think that way, that that's a way you should live, that I should help other people or be by myself. He's just, he's just one way. And I just don't get that. In my business, believe me, I work with a lot of sellers and buyers. They want everything their way. They want their money. They don't give a shit about anybody else. And I'm like, listen, you got to take this into consideration. There's people here that, like, obviously, you know, are in this deal. Like, you can't just throw the shit away because you care about what you care. And uh, it's, you know, it's that's their hell. That's their hell that they live in because that's the way they are. Now, look, I'm not saying I'm a saint. I'm not a saint. I I, I do things wrong. I, I don't ever intentionally, well, 99% of the time, I don't ever intentionally do anything to harm anybody, right? Uh, the reality is everyone makes mistakes, but these people just go their whole life and they act like that. And that's just their torture they carry with them every day. They carry that with them. And it's just about giving back, right? We talked about this before, just giving back. General, I was listening to Joe Olsen the other day. He talked about generational blessings, right? Some of the stuff we do today, 
we won't see for ourselves. We won't see if we do, you know, A, B, and C. But maybe our children get favored by God because God honors us back by doing the right thing, by donating time, by by donating money, by by doing small stuff. When I go to the when I go to Shaw's, if if I if I get a, uh, something I don't want and I realize it like ten hours later, I go back and put it back in the same place. If I'm done loading my car with groceries. I put them back in the carriage corral. I'll bring it up to the store, wherever it's closer for me to do. Like, it's those small things that you do. If someone asks for help, you help them if you can, if it doesn't take away. Remember, charity starts at home. I always tell people, listen, I get donating money to everybody, but if you need money and your kids need money, that comes first. Charity starts at home first. When there's extras, then you can donate it to other people and help them. But you have to be secure in yourself first. So, you know, this is kind of a little rant. I just, it made me think of that story and I wanted to share it with you because it was kind of a powerful message about two people and, and seeing the different mindset in the same situation. And one of them doesn't even think that way. And it's just crazy that there's people like that everywhere that they wouldn't even consider being that way because it doesn't help them. And hopefully you guys don't end up married one of those people. But, you know, it, it's something that, uh, again, it affected me and I wanted to share it because it just, you, you see that kind of attitude and you're like, now again, granted, you could have a bad day. Thank you, Juliana. You could have a bad day, but at the end of the day, just like, dude, come on. Like, we're all here together. Let's work together. I, I, I know there's wars and there's a lot of fucked up shit happening in the news, all this crazy stuff. You got to put your oxygen mask on first. <laughs> Exactly. You can't save someone else if you're on the plane and it's going down. You got to save yourself first. Exactly. So it's some of those stuff that's out there. Like I have to imagine at some point it comes back and if it doesn't come back specifically for you, it comes back for your family. Um, it's just, you know, trying to do good. I get it. Like you have to work hard and get things done. But at the end of the day, you know, you want to try to give back something, some kind of something so that, you, you know, whether it comes back to you or your family, something happens. Thank you, Brandon. Um, again, it's just, it, I'm the, it's November 1st. I'm in the middle of my phone calls. Believe me, it's not something I'd like to stop, but I just, I saw this and it affected me and I wanted to share it. I hope you guys like it. Um, I'll see you at the next rant. It's your boy, Derek. Hey, if you're ever looking to get into expired listings, feel free to hit me up. I have the expiredlistingmastery.com. It's a program that helps all agents get listings. And believe me, this market is shifting. If you haven't already seen it, there's expireds coming up today. I had 125 that I'm going to go pound out. But this market is shifting. If you haven't noticed, you've got to get trained on it. Talk to you guys later.